A major message at the heart of Frank Herbert's Dune is a warning against messiahs and mankind's tendency to blindly follow charismatic leaders. As the author himself stated, the character of Paul Atreides was intentionally designed to be a charismatic and attractive person for all the right reasons. Then, after power comes to him, he is forced to make decisions, the consequences of which result in the deaths of billions. This catastrophic loss of life is brought about through the triggering of an interplanetary war known as Muad'Dib's Jihad. In this video, I'd like to examine this Jihad, what led up to it, and how it fundamentally transformed the known universe of Frank Herbert's Dune. Spoiler warning as I will be discussing significant events occurring throughout the Dune series. While the arc of the first novel can largely be viewed as a survival story for Paul Atreides as he seeks to restore his house to the seat of power on Arrakis, the steps he takes to do so effectively cement his status as a god among his supporters. In order to gain such support in the first place, Paul would rely on the religious engineering performed generations earlier by the black arm of the Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit on Arrakis. These efforts by the Missionaria Protectiva ensured that a member of their order would be able to take advantage of the affected subjects in order to gain protection or for any other purpose required. Paul's mother, the Bene Gesserit Lady Jessica, was well aware of the Sisterhood's work on Arrakis and immediately began noticing signs of manufactured superstition and messianic prophecy after their arrival. From the moment the Fremen set eyes on the young Paul Atreides, rumor began to spread of the possible appearance of their Mahdi, the off-world messiah who they believed would lead them to paradise. Jessica proved herself skillful in her manipulation of the myths and prophecies of the Fremen, being careful to speak in a way which reinforced these beliefs while allowing the Fremen to convince themselves of his authenticity. While the exploitation of the religious fervor of the Fremen ensured Paul and Jessica's short-term survival after the Atreides suffered their initial defeat on Arrakis, their actions served as a catalyst for the Fremen's bloody jihad, which would fundamentally reshape the power structure of the known universe. After gaining asylum among the Fremen, Paul and his mother were quick to integrate and cement their place in the tribe of Stilgar with Jessica inheriting the position of Reverend Mother, serving as a spiritual leader for Siege Tabur. Given the preconceptions held by many of the Fremen, Paul quickly settled into a position of leadership among them. He then trained them in the weirding way of the Bene Gesserit, enabling the Fremen to evolve into an incredibly lethal and unstoppable force. With the Prana Bindu training they received from learning the weirding way, the Fremen were successful in achieving several major victories in their ongoing war against their hated enemies, the Harkonnens. Their war against these oppressors resulted in a disruption of spice production, a most serious threat to the powers of the Imperium. Consequently, in order to get a handle on the situation, the Emperor Shaddam Karino IV took it upon himself to travel to Arrakis along with his mighty Sardaukar warriors. Until that time, the Sardaukar were widely renowned as the greatest warriors in the known universe. However, by the time of the events of Dune, their ferocity had been undermined by arrogance, overconfidence, and the increase of cynicism in their ranks. Therefore, under Paul's leadership, the Fremen were easily able to defeat House Carino's Sardaukar, enabling the young Atreides to challenge and usurp the Emperor, taking his place on the Golden Lion Throne. This victory served to fuel the religious fervor among the Fremen, strengthening their faith that Paul was in fact their chosen one who can make the golden flower blossom in the night, the one who would facilitate the great change they had been promised for generations. With their zeal at an all-time high, the Fremen, led by Paul's elite Fadaikan warriors, exploded across the universe in a violent and bloody jihad seeking to force upon the masses the religion of Muad'Dib and to put to death any who fought to resist it. As a result, entire religious systems were wiped out, 90 planets were sterilized and an estimated 61 billion lives were lost. This left an indelible mark on humanity at large 
as it was reformed and brought into the shining light of the Emperor Mu'adib. Although they were initially driven by religious ideologies, the jihad for many became a source of strange experiences, adventure, and wealth. Given that their lives had previously been confined to the strict discipline and limitations required to survive on a desert planet, the opportunity presented to the Fremen through their participation in this interplanetary conquest was too enticing to pass up. Although their emperor was in fact a manufactured messiah, the wild success of their jihad in his name served to catalyze their blind devotion and commitment to his godship. Consequently, their fanaticism continued to snowball, causing the movement to spiral out of control as it burned across the universe. The devotion to Mu'adib was reinforced through the Kizarit, clergymen who served at Paul's behest and who worked to spread the religion of Mu'adib, the golden elixir of life. In time, the tribes of the Fremen began to embrace formerly abandoned extremist customs as they were said to have reintroduced old rites and blood sacrifices. As for Paul's part in this war, all evidence points to the fact that he saw this consequence of his actions as the best path forward. That being said, from the moment he began seeing visions of the Jihad, Paul felt a strong sense of terror and revulsion. Early on, Paul was able to see two main branchings of the future, one which saw him reconcile with his grandfather the Baron Harkonnen, and another which revealed the great and terrible Jihad. It appears that although both options were distasteful to Paul, he ended up viewing the latter as the lesser of two evils. No doubt, a strong desire to avenge his father's death and the defeat of his house heavily influenced this opinion. It's widely held that apart from a path of reconciliation with the Baron, the only real option to prevent the Jihad would have been one in which Paul had died in the desert before meeting the Fremen. However, after the Atreides were taken in by the Fremen, the fuse on that future had been irreversibly lit, condemning the known universe to all of the Jihad's inevitable horrors. From that point on, the realization of this terrible purpose continued to weigh heavy on Paul's mind. Even with his supreme abilities as the Kwisatz Haderach, after supplanting the Emperor Shaddam, he was forced to watch as the mental epidemic of the Jihad spread, powerless to prevent its devastation. Thereafter, any delusions of free will quickly faded as Paul became hemmed in and caged by destiny. Despite this, he continued to search for and take advantage of opportunities to diminish and temper the destruction in whatever ways he could. Toward the end of the Jihad, Paul was able to come to grips with reality and eventually managed to put it into perspective. He concluded that when measured against eternity, it would only amount to a brief and finite spasm in mankind's history. Ultimately, true to Paul's observation, while the Jihad did much to transform the societal structure of the known universe, by the end of the Dune Saga, this bloody war would fall into the shadow of the Golden Path, a necessary future accomplished through the introduction of even greater atrocities. But I'm curious to know what you think of Paul's Jihad. Are there any lessons or themes that you appreciate from the way Paul's story unfolds? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.